joke. So um, let's start with uh, it's an afternoon and want to wake up a little bit. So let's do a joke. And you know that you can actually measure how old you are mentally by how you use your mobile phone. So which fi try to figure out which one of these patterns you most closely fit into. If you're that type of person that a couple of times every month you look at your phone and it starts to bother you and then you give it to your child and say, could you, could you please make it stop again because it has that envelope that you don't know how to read a text message, then you are over 60 years old. If you are able to read text messages, people send them to you, but you never send. You call them back. They send you a text message and you call them back. Then you're over 50 years old. If you are able to send text messages, but when people send you an urgent message, it takes a very, 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 very long time for the message to arrive, and it's a very <coughs> short word that comes back, then you're in your 40s. If you broke through the barrier, you became addicted to mobile and messaging, you got yourself a Blackberry, you got yourself you know, some, some HTC or Nokia with a QWERTY keyboard to make sure that you can do your messaging, then you're in your 30s. If you're able to take your mobile phone out of your pocket and send a text message to your you know, best friend without looking at your phone, then you're a teenager. I'm sorry, in your 20s. But if you're able to send a text message to your girlfriend on one phone, and at the same time use your other phone to ask your uh, advice of your boyfriend of what should I tell my angry girlfriend now because she's upset at me, if you're able to carry, two, carry on two text messages simultaneously, then you're a teenager. So, um, my name is Tommy Ahonen. I've, I've been studying this industry now for, for a little over a decade. I'm an ex-Nokia guy. I now live in Hong Kong. And um, my specialty is how mobile makes its money. What are the services and applications around mobile? I don't know anything about the recruiting industry. I don't know anything about job search. It's 10 years since I last held a real job back at Nokia. I, you know, my own needs to recruit when I was building a department at Nokia was 12 years ago. So, so I am completely divorced from your daily life. When I try to look through my collection of mobile services all around the world from Singapore and from Sweden and from Brazil and from my collections from around the world, I was only able to find two that relate to job search and, and linking jobs and employment, and they're actually variations of the same service. So it's only actually one version, a little bit more advanced from Japan, a little bit less advanced from India, but it's the same service. I'll be showing that in my presentation. And one statistic that has a little bit of, of how mobile relates to this industry. So I'm sorry, I'll be talking about mobile in general, how it relates to, how it works as a medium, how it works as a communication tool, and how you can hopefully take advantage of it. What are some of the unique abilities in mobile? So let's start. Mobile is the personal mass medium. And to start with, let's start with size. How big is mobile? If you noticed, we're right now celebrating the planet at 7 billion population. The planet has reached 7 billion people. Mobile phones at the end of this year will reach, whoops, where's my, sorry, here we go, will reach 5.8 billion, 5.8 billion total mobile phone subscriptions in use on the planet. If we spread that across everyone with only one phone per person or one subscription per person, that's over 80% penetration of mobile phones on the planet today. Now obviously we know in Europe, you know, adults, uh, employed adults will have two phones. You'll have an iPhone, you'll have Blackberry, etc. So it's not, that's not really 5.8 billion unique people, it'll be less than that. But nonetheless, if we count subscriptions, 5.8 billion. Compare that to several of us in the room had a little bit gray in our hair. We remember a time when the telephone was actually a fixed landline phone. How big is mobile compared to the landline phone? Five times bigger. How about personal computers? Take every desktop, every laptop, every netbook, every notebook, every iPod, every tablet, I iPad and every tablet. All type of computers combined, mobile is four times bigger. Television, mobile is three times bigger. The total internet, every use, internet at your home, internet at your office, internet at the university, internet at an internet cafe, internet on your mobile phone, mobile is still two times bigger than the internet. There's never been a technology like mobile. Mobile transcends age. 10% of four-year-olds in Britain have a mobile phone. Mobile phones transcend literacy. There are people who are illiterate who now have mobile phones and find use out of them because they can talk on the phone. Mobile phones transcend electricity. There are villages and towns in Africa and India where people will send their mobile phone with their child to school because at school they can charge. 
This is a good way for teachers to make sure that the parents don't stop the kids coming to school. So they let the phones be charged and parents send the you know, kids to school with the phones, charge the phones, etc. Transcends electricity. And toothbrushes. We're at the point more people have actually use a mobile phone than, have, uh, than use a toothbrush. So, but it's not just size. It gets more relevant when we start looking at the speed of mobile. New Zealand measured, they compared. They found that the average email is read in 48 hours. The average SMS text message is read in four minutes. The speed difference is 720 times faster. If you hoped 200 years ago, wanted to go visit New York, you hopped on a sailboat over there in you know, Liverpool and, and sailed over to, to New York, and you hoped the captain was good, you had good weather, you had good winds, he didn't get lost, he didn't land in Cuba, he didn't land in Canada, but he actually made it across, there was no icebergs that he hit, he made it across, it would take you under good winds three weeks to cross the Atlantic. And you know, Heathrow, we could fly with this wonderful magical you know, thing, the Concorde, three hours and 20 minutes, uh, 10 years ago, until they took the Concorde out of service. The speed differential going from sail ship crossing the Atlantic to the Concorde is not 720 times faster, it's only 360 times faster. Going from, SM from email to SMS is 720 times faster. Think about your own use of email today, internal communications. Getting your boss's approval, getting your secretary to inform your team, getting your, your meeting arranged, getting that person who had to be picked up and change the schedule and so forth. If you get this kind of ping pong email stuff, if you can improve that speed by 720 at every iteration of that communication, who doesn't want to do this now? It doesn't mean that SMS will kill email. There are times when we need the long discussion, where we need to put the attachments and so forth. But if the discussion is only on, you know, can I, I need to go visit with this customer in Brussels, you know, can you authorize my Eurostar ticket so that I can, you know, take the train, etc. Why should you do that on email when you can do that on SMS? This is the future of your communication. But the magic number is 720. I was truly astonished when the Internet Advertising Bureau released these numbers from Britain. Comparing e-commerce, you go to eBay and you pick up Tony Fish's book, you want to buy it. Average person from the time they first go to an e-commerce site to when they actually make the purchase takes about one month. But on a mobile phone, you go to a mobile commerce site and you actually make a purchase on it, it takes about one hour. Do the math, it is 720 times faster. Spooky! There, there's some logic here, there's something truly mysterious. Mobile is incredibly fast. So it's the widest reaching medium, and it is the fastest medium. There's something even more diabolical. It is addictive. How addicted are we? Nokia measured. The average person, I'm not talking teenagers, the average person. On the planet, not just Scandinavia crazy, not just Japan and Singapore and Hong Kong. But Germany, France and Italy and definitely the UK, average person looks at their mobile phone 150 times per day. Average that across the hours that you are awake, that's once every six and a half minutes. You are listening to Tommy Ahonen, you will be looking at the mobile phone seven times during my speech today. You just cannot go without you know, checking at least once or twice, you know. Does my boss need me? You know, how is the wife? Did the kids get home? You know, whatever. So, compare that to cigarette smoking. Take a heavy cigarette smoker, smokes a pack a day. No, even more heavy, two packs a day, three packs a day. Someone chain smoking three packs a day goes into their pocket 60 times a day. The average user of a mobile phone looks at their mobile phone 150 times per day. There has never, ever been a technology like mobile. Nothing comes close. So, but mobile has changed. We used to think of it as the mobile phone. We used to think that this is the way we talk. It is a mobile phone. It is a cell phone. Obviously, it is like the telephone. Not anymore, it isn't. This is how we use the mobile today. That's why I don't call it a mobile phone anymore. I talk about this industry as mobile industry. I talk about it as a mobile device. The primary use of a mobile phone today is messaging. Then comes mobile internet and applications long before we care about voice calls. So let's look at the customer of mobile. 
I like to think that the young people of today are the customers of tomorrow. So let's start with the youth first and take a little interesting look at American youth today. We think of them as a Facebook generation. So when we think about Americans, that's where Facebook started, that's a country vast leadership in the internet. And if you have been following the statistics of telecoms, the United States happens to be very far behind in mobile. You might be shocked to find out it was this year, 2011, that the United States reached 100% penetration of mobile phones. <coughs> Britain reached that 2003, eight years ago. America only now caught, now caught up to where, Amer where Britain was in 2003, when Finland was in 2001. They're that much behind. And in SMS text messaging, we were all using SMS text messaging five, six, seven, eight years ago. America, half of the population wasn't using SMS until 2008. That was the year when uh, uh, candidate Obama announced his vice presidential choice by SMS. So, this is the country which leads on the internet, which leads on, the fa on Facebook, and where mobile is, is behind and SMS is behind. So we ask young people, what is your favorite way to communicate? And this is what they say. 68% of teenagers pick SMS. Where is Facebook in this? 9%. Seven times more people will pick SMS than Facebook. Email is dead. 0.3%. <laughs> Instant messaging, 3%. So, while yes, obviously they love Facebook, Obviously, they love their instant messaging. You've got teenage kids here, you know they love their Blackberry messengers and so forth. But SMS is the preferred way all across the planet, even in uh, a, a market as advanced on Facebook and Internet and as behind on mobile as the United States. So how, what does this mean in concrete terms? Heavy users, teenagers will average 100 text messages a day. This was uh, one-third of, of American students, in two th two, uh, teenagers in 2010, British students in 2007, one-third. You want to do Tolstoy's novel, War and Peace. Those heavy users will text a full volume of War and Peace every seven months. So it's not a question like their thumbs are going to ache. They are going to do a massive amount of messaging. But the more crazy stuff, here from Britain, 10% of young people think it is perfectly okay to send text messages while having sex. I come from Finland, okay? We have very liberal, you know, sexual standards in Finland. 51-year-old guy, not married, but I don't want my next girlfriend to stick her hand underneath a pillow and, you know, secretly be doing updates to her girlfriends of, you know, how Tommy is performing in bed. So like, please, no, no, this is not me. I don't understand this. But going back to that Facebook generation, young people, do have a completely different uh, uh, kind of value system on what should be shared, what should be private, what is fair to discuss, what they want to tell the rest of the world about themselves and what they are doing. So, but please don't misunderstand me. I am Mr. Mobile, Mobile, I love Mobile, all my books are about Mobile, but please don't misunderstand me. It is not the only medium, it is not the last medium, it is not the ultimate medium, it will not kill the internet, it will not kill television, it will not kill print, it is just one out of the different ways that we use. For young people it is the preferred medium, the mobile phone is their preferred device and it is their friend and their personality, but it is not the only thing. So please don't misunderstand me while my presentation is all mobile, I believe multi-platform we do you know, integrated campaigns across all media and we use them together and so forth. But I like to give you examples of how great mobile can be. And then if we look at the extreme, if you're still not sold, let's go back to those, those backwards Americans. Just now Pew study from, from uh, September, American adults, 31% with mobile phones, 31% prefer to be contacted by SMS. In Britain this is at least 51%, in Finland it will be at least 61%. 31% of American adults prefer to be contacted by SMS. If you have your recruitment job that you're doing, you're, you're, you're communicating with your clients and you're not offering SMS as an op option, here in Britain, you're probably upsetting half of your, your contact base. They would have one, adults, not, not uh, college kids, who would have preferred that you allow them, you know, you to contact when, and, and, and communicate with them also by SMS. Doesn't mean everyone does it, but there's an increasing preference, people like this. So let's look a little bit at mobile as, as the seventh mass medium. 
There's a Wikipedia page on it. Very kindly, Jobsite is giving each of you a, a copy of my book of the same, same title. So in that sense, you can read follow more up uh, on it. I'm not going to spend much time on it. I want to mention, just so you understand why am I talking about the seventh mass medium. There are seven mass media in chronological order, print, 500 years old, books, magazines, newspapers, billboards, etc. Then we get recordings, phonographs, records, DVDs, uh, video games, etc. Then we get cinema, radio, television, internet, and mobile. If I tell you that cinema as a mass medium is different from a newspaper, you understand this instinctively. If you were going to advise your nephew or your niece on a career in media and they're thinking, should I go into newspapers or should I go to cinema, you can very easily advise them, well, in newspapers we need to, you know, you have to have a journalist, you have to look at the story, you maybe want to take photographs. In the movies you have directors, you have stages, you have scripts, actors, and so very different while both are mass media. Their business models are different. In the movies you pay every time when you see and then you make residual income on selling those licenses. In newspapers, we sell every issue, we sell subscriptions, you sell it on the newsstand and so forth. So, we understand this instinctively, that cinema is different from print. I am telling you there's a similar difference between mobile and the internet. It is very easy to fall into the trap when you see your cool little phone and, and it looks like a little computer with a nice little screen and a nice little keyboard and then to think, oh this is the same. Because you can access the same internet exactly the same internet on that device. Did you know you can access the same FM radio on your television? But who uses television to listen to radio? So, who wants to put a real horse in a car? You've got, you know, 130 horsepower on your engine, why would you put a real horse in it? So, the internet is a mass medium, it'll grow, it'll be great, but it is totally different from mobile. Totally different. It is as different from the internet as television is different from radio. Television and radio are both broadcast industries, so there is overlap, there is similarity. But we understand that radio is a totally different medium from television. Mobile is a totally different medium from the internet. Two interesting thoughts on this. First, if you know the history of television, you know that when television was launched, television stole every concept the radio had. Radio had news. Television, oh good, we'll do news. Radio had live sports. Television, oh fine, we'll do live sports. Television had, uh, radio had weather. We said, oh yeah, we can do weather. Tele uh, radio had soap operas. Television, yeah, we can do soap operas, etc. They stole everything that radio had. Then television went and innovated. Then television created things that you cannot do on radio. Music video. You get Lady Gaga doing her latest, you know, thing. Put that video on radio, it's not music video anymore. Only unique to television. And after that, when television started to create its own unique content, then radio started also and developed its own. Talk time, uh, uh, drive time radio. You, you can't do drive time radio on television. <laughs> it doesn't work. You have the people in the car, they can't watch TV. So, first television stole everything that, the inter uh, that, that radio had, then television created unique content that radio couldn't do, and after that radio also found new unique op opportunities. Television did not kill radio. Tommy says mobile is as different from the internet as television is different from radio. Mobile has already stolen everything that the internet has in terms of any kind of mass media service that you have. It doesn't always work as well on mobile, but you take an I iPhone and you can do anything that you can do on your PC. Absolutely anything. No problem. Now, then mobile went and invented new things that you cannot do on the internet anymore. Ringing tones. How many of us install ringing tones onto our laptops? None. Five billion dollar business worldwide. Basic ringing tones. Bigger than iTunes globally. Ringing tones. Stupid little ringing tones. So mobile has already gone through this process. The other thing I want to show is the analogy. Mobile is as big compared to the internet as television is big compared to radio. Television started as the little brother, it soon grew to be bigger, now that it has a much larger uh, active audience, it reaches, it has much, many more people employed in it, it makes much more money than radio. Radio didn't die, but television just grew to be much bigger. Mobile will do exactly the same with the internet. 
The internet's not going to die. The internet will keep on growing. But mobile is already bigger by reach. Mobile already makes more money than the internet. Mobile will definitely be the predominant medium when it comes uh, to news and entertainment and advertising media than the internet. So, uh, a couple of bits of uh, evidence on this. I've been telling this theory for a long time. We've been arguing it with technologists for a long time. Here comes the evidence. Tiffany's. Ladies know the Tiffany's brand. Jewelries. So, jewelry. Tiffany's has an uh, e-commerce site. You can go online to buy jewelry. Tiffany's also has a mobile site. And their advertising agency in New York, RGA, noticed that the mobile site was not optimized for mobile. When you got onto it on a mobile site, it was the same internet site just trying to squeeze it onto to the mobile screen. RGA optimized the site for mobile, and look what happened to sales. More than doubled, grew by 125%. This fact alone pre proves beyond a shadow of a doubt that there are two internets. This could not happen if there was one internet. This proves beyond a shadow of a doubt that there are two internets. I'm not claiming mobile. This doesn't prove that mobile is better, but this proves that it's different. If you optimize for one, you get a different result. Therefore, they are not the same. That's all I want to prove with this slide. But take this back home to all of your technologists who will say, oh, Tommy's crazy. There's only going to be one internet. Bullshit. This is evidence, absolute proof. But I d I'm not standing alone saying so. Some of you work in the media. You recognize the Associated Press Editors Association. They just had their event where they said mobile is the future of news, not the internet. But better than that, they compared the two. And here comes the critical part. CEO and President, Associated Press, uh, Managing Editors, uh, Tom Curley says, media companies lost revenues with the internet, but have a chance to change that with mobile. Newspaper editors-in-chief feel that mobile and internet are not just different, obviously, but mobile has an opportunity to capture revenue that was not capturable on the internet. I put it in a different way. I put it more positively. I say mobile is the magical money-making machine. Mobile is the magical money-making machine. We can take any other media and make money for it through mobile. Any evidence? Pop Idol, X Factor. Eurovision, Song Constant, Television, Radio, Newspapers, Magazines, Billboards. I can make them interactive. I can make money on them. The Internet. Your kids on Hub Hotel paying through their mobile phone to buy their virtual properties. I can make money for Internet companies through mobile. So, if you've seen my stories before, I've been talking about the unique uh, benefits of mobile. Used to be eight of them. Uh, two weeks ago, Russell Buckley discovered the ninth. So this is the nine unique benefits of mobile. All of you who have a camera phone, please take it out now. I'm serious. Please take your camera phone out now. Take a picture of this. This is the answer. Every one of you who is in this room has to take a picture of this. Take out your camera phone. Now you're going to take a picture of this slide. You need this slide. I'm not going to show it again. You need this slide because this is the key to your future. You are senior people and you have to know why mobile is different. Obviously, you'll get these slides later, and you can read my book, but this is the nine, which are not available anywhere else yet. Take a picture of this. This is how money is made in mobile. I am arguing there are nine unique abilities to mobile, which you cannot do on the internet, you cannot do on broadband, you cannot do on DVD, you cannot do on digital TV, you cannot do on digital radio, not in print, not in cinema, no other media. Any one of these nine is a key to customer satisfaction. Any one of these nine is a key to revenues. Any one of these nine is a key to profits. Here is where the success of your career, your team, your company, your future lies. This is why Google is in mobile. This is why Apple is in mobile. This is the key, because mobile has unique abilities. Nine unique abilities you cannot do anywhere else. The richest man on the planet used to be Bill Gates. Now it is Carlos Slim, a mobilista from Mexico. All the profits, Apple was making losses, comes into mobile, now makes tons of profits. This is the future, here is the key why. I will take every one of these examples, show you one statistic, one service example of how it works. Let's start. 
Unique benefit number one, mobile is the first personal mass medium. Statistic from Japan. Lynx deodorant brand, Axie in Japan. Youth boys uh, deodorant band, you know, uh, teenager boys use deodorant. So they offer these virtual girls, real girls, 14 girls, pick the one that's your favorite personality, and have that girl installed as a virtual character on your phone, an avatar. So every one of us uses our mobile phone as our alarm clock to wake up in the morning. So rather than the phone you know, going in the morning, bzzz, bzzz, time for Tommy to wake up, come talk to a conference, bzzz, the phone goes, ah, Tommy, time to wake up. My, my, my sexy little girl here, you know, wake, waking me up in the morning. And of, of course, she's going to remind you to put on your deodorant, obviously. 200,000 users, increased deodorant sales 300%. Hundred percent. British scale, that's a hundred thousand teenage boys signing up for this. Very soon we will all do this. Because this is uh, Japan is just slightly ahead in terms of their technology, their phones, and so forth. So very soon we will all, all be having how many of you have created an avatar of yourself? Anywhere in Second Life, in in uh, you know, some uh, World of Warcraft, anywhere. Okay. Uh, in Korea, half of the population has created an avatar of themselves. Japan is almost half. So we will soon be there. So this is just, we're a couple of years behind this. In Finland, what do we do this in a more practical looking at, at kind of job search and career development? How about education? So we know engineers are horribly clumsy people, you know, have very hard time, you know, date, dating and meeting people, ra much rather play with their technology and computers in the basement. So in Finland, if you know Finns, we are totally, completely antisocial. So, so in Finland, they developed this ga game called, uh, a nerd, what was it, nerd, a uh, metro nerd. Um, to allow you to have a, a, a training, virtual training on your mobile phone on how to be more social and friendly and romantic. Okay? A little game, role-playing game that you can practice on your mobile phone. So try to become more human. Simple things, they're very personal. We don't want to go to a course to do this and admit to others that you know, I'm, I'm clumsy and you know, difficult. I don't want to go to a psycho psychologist, a psychiatrist to get the help. But if I can have it secretly on my mobile phone, personal. Very easy, I can do it privately, nobody pays attention, and I can kind of improve myself. Unique benefit number two, mobile is permanently connected. Statistic from America, newspapers. The Audit Bureau of Circulations, total, uh, subscription, uh, total uh, circulations of printed newspapers, 34 million, USA. Then the Newspaper Association of America reports the online consumption of news is 105 million, but Comscore calculated that 118 million Americans consume news on a mobile phone. Three and a half times more people consume on a mobile phone than read a newspaper, or buy a newspaper. Obviously some newspapers are shared, so its real reach is a little bit bigger than that. What can we do? This is my only example from, from connecting jobs and, and, and job seekers. The example from, from India, uh, Baba Job from Bengaluru. So, so this is a simple uh, short-term work finder. So you know, like the temporary work that we had on newspapers uh, in the classified advertisements. So if you need someone to be a temporary cook, you know your cook is sick at your restaurant or you want someone to come and help at your garden or you need, to do, you need a couple of repairmen for a couple of days to work on, on your building or whatever. They now let people sign up. You get free updates, your job offers. They charge the, the, the job ads to the employers and 100,000 uh, potential employees have signed up looking for part-time, small-time jobs. And they get announcements on their phone, simple offers, uh, you know, SMS, using IVR, uh, using uh, basic internet, so WAP. And, and uh, was very uh, happy and successful. They won the, the award for the best mobile service by Momo in, in 2009. Unique benefit number three, only mobile is always carried. Statistic also from media from Canada. I'm from Finland, so of course I'm a hockey fan, a Formula One fan. So, so uh, Ice Hockey has a weekly magazine called The Hockey News. You know, year 2009, world economy going in major crash. Any print people, you know that was a disastrous year. Everyone lost print sales, the readerships were down, advertising revenues were down. Absolutely miserable year. Hockey News decided to experiment. They were very afraid, but they launched a mobile version. They were afraid that the mobile version would cannibalize their print sales. First of all, they found 300,000 new paying users, consumers of mobile news, hockey news, weekly on their mobile magazine. 
UK scale, if you think of football weekly magazine or Formula One magazine or tennis magazine, that's 600,000 new paying users for you. But better than that, check this out. Increased print sales by 5% year 2009. Any of you who work in the print industry tell me if you know of any print title that increased sales in 2009. I believe this is a world record, I don't know. This was the year where every print title lost readership. They increased their print sales by 5%. I told you, mobile is a magical money-making machine. Mobile is a magical money-making machine. I get new customers and my existing customers buy more. Duh! This is the way to go. So, what can we do in a practical sense? Sida, the rapper in Japan, launched a location-based adver advertisement for his album, new album. He told the story of his favorite moments in Japan, which were all across a kind of tourist guide to Japan. So this is the place where I crashed my motorcycle, this is the place where I w met my wife, this is the place where I wrote the number one song that we had, etc. And travel with Sida around Japan, this is you know in Tokyo, and this is in Hokkaido, and this is in Osaka, and, and so forth. Wherever you go, you will hear his story, why, why that place is special for him, and you hear the song that he, from the new album that he assigns to that location. So for the fans to have a fun adventure across Japan with their favorite star, and at the same time, obviously, for, for Sida to promote his, his album. Album reaches number one, of course. Unique, unique benefit number four, mobile has a built-in payment channel. Astonishing numbers from Kenya. M-Pesa, the first uh, mobile payment so solution in Kenya, was launched four years ago. Today, 30% of the total Kenya economy transits a mobile phone. 30% of the total GDP goes through a mobile phone. It is completely normal to get your full salary paid to your mobile phone. For you to pay your mortgage, for you to pay your car payments, for you to pay your, uh, the, the uh, grocery uh, bills, for you to pay your transportation, for your hotel, whatever. Completely normal. 30% of the total GDP goes through a mobile phone. Kenya is now in a race to become the, one, the first country to eliminate cash, together with uh, 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 Somalia and with uh, Sweden are among the racers who will be the first to stop the printing of cash. What can we do with this? Rival in Kenya, this is Airtel, together with MasterCard and Standard Chartered Bank, they offer virtual credit cards. If you don't qualify for a credit card but you want to buy Tony's book, you go to Amazon, you need a credit card. So, book costs 10 pounds and 2 pounds shipping to Kenya, what do you do? You go to your mobile phone, you buy a virtual credit card. You pay 12 pounds plus whatever they charge a little commission, you get the 16 digit code and the authorization code and the, and the, the termination date, the information you need to fill in a virtual name and you enter that, anywhere that accepts MasterCard, there's a perfectly valid one-time use for to make that payment. Beautiful, wonderful, different way to handle. Unique benefit number five, where we're talking about Tony, I thought I was done with these four, and all at once I have to write a new book because Tony Fish discovered this one. Tommy, that's not all. Did you know we also have this unique benefit? Mobile is available at the creative impulse. User-generated content, all this kind of thing with citizen journalism and so forth. Here's the only statistic I had that mentions job searches in any way. Sorry, it's a little bit old. It's from 2007 from South Korea. However, South Korea is the world leader in social media. South Korea essentially invented almost everything there is to social media. In 2001, the best-selling movie in South Korea was about a girl blogger. You think about the first time you wrote your first blog. You think about the first time you went and read a blog site. South Korea had blogs. So popular, they made a movie about it ten years ago. They're the place where they invented uh, uh, citizen journalism, etc. So my point is, jobs and learning ranks number five amongst the most popular type of user-generated content in South Korea. This will be reality in Britain very soon. So it, it will be a relevant part, one-fourth out of the total population doing this. So you, you will be getting there soon. You're in the right place, you're in the right room thinking about this future for, for your business. But this is Korea today. This is a subway station, tube station in Seoul. The guys going into the train here. They've taken posters, life-size posters, where you would see the windows to the trains, and they've put life-size pictures. Let me show you a close-up. So, so 
uh, this is orange juice, and you know, you buy your Coca-Cola and your cornflakes and so forth. What the guy is doing, he takes his phone, takes a picture of the QR code, which is right here. <coughs> take a picture of the QR code, I want two uh, orange juices, then I'll take some cornflakes and I'll have some Pepsi, etc. Half of Koreans, more than half of Koreans, have, have mobile uh, payments enabled on their phones, so it pays instantly on his phone. It is delivered to his home door before he gets home on this train. What happened to sales? Tesco owned property, Home Plus, increased sales not by 30%, 130% increase in grocery sales for putting a couple of posters in the subway station. I just read today, Prague has now copied the same idea. Happens in, in Prague subway stations already. So I mean, that, that just, just the future of our, our way to do commerce. Unique benefit number six. I was just done with my, my unique benefits and here comes AMF Ventures. That's Tony's company again. I said, no, no, Tommy, there's another unique benefit. So, so uh, discovered in 2007 was mobile measures the audience most accurately. So where I like to say mobile is the magical money-making machine, I also add mobile is the magical measurement machine. Anything you want to measure, you can measure most accurately with mobile. We are going to put the Nielsen's and these guys out of business. You want to measure your readership, you want to measure your audience, you want to measure your customer base, you want to measure your, uh, uh, your, your job search applicants, etc. Mobile is the magical measurement machine. What do we know? Statistics on this? Astonishing. Comscore just measured uh, October in America. 52% of Americans with smartphones, that's roughly the same percentage of smartphones as in Britain, about one third of the population has smartphones. 52% of smartphone owners had changed their mind inside a retail store while shopping because of something on the phone. They had gone price shopping. They had gone to the competitor's site. They had called their friend for advice. Should I buy the Samsung? No, 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 buy the LG. 52% of consumers had changed their mind while shopping of the ones who had smartphones. This will very soon be 100%. Of course, that's the logical way to go shopping. But if you are retail, you know, if, you, if you're Tesco, if, if you're Hennes and Mauritz, if you're, you're Marks and Spencer, you have to have big signs in your store saying that www, come to my website, you know, don't send them to your competitor's site. Have big QR codes everywhere, link here, come to our site and find more information about your purchase and, and, and so forth. At least make them start on your site rather than go to the competitor's site. What can we do with this? Oh, one of my favorite statistics from South Africa. Any of you have kids? This is your statistic. South Africa schools, they had uh, 30 schools, 4,000 students, grade level high school in South Africa, who were given the chance to do practice exams, for uh, practice exercises of mathematics on their mobile phones. Then they took the annual te test across, uh, they did the national test in, in mathematics, 14, one for 14 percent on average better scores. That's a whole letter grade better scores on average. If you're a parent with kids in school today, you want your school doing this tomorrow. Not just mathematics, you want it in biology, you want it in history, you want it in English grammar, you want it absolutely. Please, if we can use the device that our kids have in our pockets anyway, to help them get better grades in school, is there no better thing we can do as parents to our kids? Obvious. Unique benefit number seven, only mobile captures the social context of our consumption. Statistic also in this area from UK, from uh, museums. Three British museums set up my art space. They took, uh, what was it, 3,000 kids, 100 schools, museum visits. It was an adventure, social media, camera phones, uh, mixing, matching, uh, 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 twittering, uh, blogging, comments, uh, rating, and, and, and so forth to, to discuss about, uh, you know, chat and so forth. A virtual adventure hunt inside the museum. Did the kids like it? They spent four and a half times longer there in the presence of their teacher in the museum. Who doesn't want this? Did these kids learn more on these visits? Obviously they did. On a practical sense, what can we do with this Obama did with his uh, uh, campaign in 2008? He had an iPhone app, which had lots of cool things in it. The little part that most didn't notice, but I felt this was the, the brilliant part of his application, he had an, a version of the phone book that would take live feeds of the latest polls per state in the McCain versus Obama 
polls leading to the election. So your normal phone book displays the name of the person you're going to call and the phone number. This application replaced the phone number to show the poll result. So your friend Johnny lives in Texas. You would see that, oh, McCain leads Obama 64 to, to 36. Then your friend Billy lives in New York, and you see, ah, Obama leads 54 to, to 46. Then you have your friend Jane, who lives in Virginia, and you look at, oh my God, in Virginia, Obama is behind 49 by 51. Obama was supposed to lose Virginia, and he's, she, he's running almost neck to neck. If you are an Obama supporter, you wouldn't download the Obama app unless you were. If you're an Obama supporter, you're not going to send your money to Texas where Obama's going to lose anyway. You're not going to send your money to New York where Obama is so much ahead, he's going to win anyway. You send your money to Virginia because that's where he's running 49 to 51. If you give your weekend and go and volunteer time there, you can help Obama win Virginia as well social context of consumption. We don't care who votes. We don't care if Jane is a uh, McCain supporter, or if Jane is an Obama supporter, or if Jane is even an illegal alien not allowed to vote. We want to know the social context of that consumption. Who in the state of Virginia, what is the current status? Clever stuff we can do with mobile. Unique benefit number eight, mobile enables augmented reality. So augmented reality, one of these hot elements that we can do now with premium phones, smartphones, camera phones. So, so this is uh, one of the big companies is Lyar in, in the Netherlands. So this is Amsterdam. You look at your, your normal view on your camera phone and it's just like any other normal view. You can take a picture of the, of the canals. What Lyar now allows is if you're interested in looking for where's the, the nearest uh, uh, bathroom or, or where's the nearest cash machine or, or I want to buy a house. So in this case, they're, okay, here's a house for sale. The house is on Prince Hendrikskrade Street. It costs uh, 350,000 euros. It has 165 square meters in size. It's right there. And then if you move your phone a little bit later, oh, there's another house here that's also for sale, and so forth. Augmented reality. So we l use our phone, and we see something beyond what's the reality. For example, you can go to Berlin and take a look at the Berlin Wall which doesn't exist anymore, but you use the phone and you can see through an augmented reality uh, application where the wall was. You can actually walk to the other side and see the view from the East Germany side of what the East Germans saw. You know, these kind of things which were not possible in real time at the time. No one was allowed to see both sides, you know, unless you were working for the United Nations or something. So, now, what can we do in a practical sense? So this is, again, uh, Axie Link's brand print ads where they say, take out your uh, phone and take a look at this girl. Right? So you take out your phone and say, ah, sexy. You know, it's not quite naked, but you know, nice lingerie. So you can only see it if you use your phone. We can make the advertisement interactive. Unique benefit number nine, mobile offers a digital interface uh, to the real world. So this is the news, uh, new, new uh, unique ability. I don't have statistics on this, but let me give you two examples then in that case. First, we can make humans remote control. This is a, a fashion store in, in New York, Daffy's. They offered, uh, they put two live models in their window display, dressed in a nice suit, lady in nice, nice costume, and then they had a nice rack there of other clothes. Send a text message what you want her to dress. Oh, please put on the blue dress, okay? For her to put on the blue dress, she has to take this thing off, right? And then you send the next message, oh, please put on the black dress. She has to take the red dress off to put on the black dress, etc. Now, never naked, but they go back to the, you know, and uh, stripping and dressing and stripping and dressing, etc. Received 1,500 text messages, boys and girls, so it was not sexist. And, you know, they got marriage proposals and, you know, just absolutely, you know, all, all kind of awesome messages by the end. On the other side, much more practical, in the town in Germany, uh, town of um, Lemgo, they have remote control lighting, street lighting. Main lights are lit, side streets are not lit at night. If you want your home street light to be turned on, you send a text message, the lights come on for 15 minutes, just enough time so you can get safely home. City saves 40,000 euros. If you did it on 50,000 euros, if we did 50,000 euros, yeah. If we did it on, on London scale, this would be savings of three million, uh, no, yeah, three million pounds or something like that. No, seven million pounds. So I want to mention a little bit about smartphones and apps. Many of you who are, talk, are studying mobile, you will hear your, your digital people talk about, oh, let's do a cool iPhone app. Martin Wilson talks about the danger of the eye syndrome. The eye syndrome is the mistaken belief that creating an iPhone app or any smartphone app is a mobile strategy. 
It is not. It is only a small part of a smartphone, uh, of, of a mobile strategy. Because everyone doesn't have an iPhone. Everyone doesn't have a smartphone. iPhones worldwide are 4% of all phones in use. In Britain, less than 10% of all phones are iPhones. Smartphones are only in the pockets of one-third of your population. Two-thirds are immediately ignored if you do a smartphone on every existing platform, on Black Blackberries, on Symbians, on Windows, on iPhones, on uh, Androids, uh, on Badas, and so forth. You're still ignoring two-thirds of the British population. If you want more evidence, here's some. You want to create a low-cost professional application for a smartphone. I'm sorry, Guardian. I'm sorry, wrong order. Guardi uh, so, so Guardian has an iPhone app and a mobile web app. Their total reach on the mobile web is 14, one four, 14 times bigger. And how about costs? If you take the cost of a modest professional smartphone app, will cost you about $10,000 to $15,000 to make, but the equivalent experience on the mobile web will cost $3,000. So, mobile web is four times cheaper. I argue, therefore, provocatively, that mobile web is 56 times better. It is four times bigger, 14 times bigger by reach, and four times cheaper if you want to develop on it. Practical thing, what we can do with it, the American food giant Kraft says they have a strategy of no phone left behind. <laughs> we start with SMS, MMS, mobile web, then we do the applications later. Nothing wrong with applications as long as you don't start there. Practical Coca-Cola says the same thing. We have a rule of 70, 20, 10. 70% 70 of Coca-Cola's mobile budget goes to messaging, 20% to the mobile web, and only 10% to the applications. There's nothing wrong with apps, just don't start there. That's not the priority. I want to end with a thought about magic. I really love this industry, the innovative ability. We can do cool things that truly seem magical the first time you use it. So imagine a calorie counter application. What would a calorie counter application look like? Where you would enter, okay, I'm going to have some, you know, I'm going to have a hamburger, I'm going to have some Pepsi, I'm going to have some French fries, tomato, ketchup, you know, how many calories, you know, how do I enter it easily and so forth. This is Japan today, the calorie phone. They have clever algorithm that recognize by the image over 1,000 Japanese dishes. The image so clever, they recognize, is this sushi? Is this sashimi? Is this inagi? Is this, you know, is this a uh, uh, salad? And it has tomatoes and has, has lettuce. And it will calculate the estimate of how many calories that is for you. Just one picture, that's all you need to do. You don't have to write anything. This is magical. This is what we can do with mobile. And this is what I would like to inspire you. When you do cool things in mobile, don't copy the internet. Don't copy television. Let's, do, let's use the nine unique abilities to mobile to create magic. So that's all I had prepared for you. And I have, I hope, a little bit of time. So I'll be happy to take some questions. I'm also here till the end if you want to, to meet me privately and, and talk with more. But yes, so that's all I had prepared for you. Thank you.